We are back to the case study section. Uh, remember, we had told you we are going to be talking to you. We are going to be showing you lots and lots of case studies. Why case study? Is because, you know, when you are learning biomimicry, we could have simply gone on and on and on, given you all the gyan, right? But case study helps you understand that there are people who have actually done and succeeded in, in the process. Which is why it's also an encouragement, right? It's also it's also nice to nice to hear that a student who who has the student has been successful in going from problem to solution. So the more and more case studies that you have, the more and more confidence you will get that you can do this yourself. And I don't know how many times I've told you already, but can you imagine? Can you imagine each one of you, whoever is applying for a job, employment, and all that? Actually, putting up your, putting your, uh, you know, telling uh, to, in, in the CV, saying that you are solving a world problem and you are using an out of, the, out of the box solution like biomimicry to solve that problem. Can you imagine the power that CV will have? I keep saying this. I've said it several times, but it doesn't matter because I'm hoping that all of you will start to choose a problem to solve and take that problem and put it on your CV and say, I'm solving this problem. Because again and again, I keep telling you, employers want employers want problem solvers. They don't care about anything else. Trust me, I have been in employment. I have been in employment for a long time. And the only thing that was expected of me is to be a problem solver. So fall in love with the problems. Now let's go to Ishan. Ishan Jalan, Department of Biotechnology, IIT Madras. What has he done? What should now, by now you'll be familiar, right? You've already heard several student projects, you'll be familiar. United Nations Sustainable Development Goals. I don't know how many of you have chosen your goal already. If you have not, please do. Ishan has chosen goal number seven, affordable and clean energy. Why? Because of the emotional connect. And uh, so therefore affordable and clean energy, information. So now it's easy for you. Now the process is falling in place. Choose a problem, look for information. In this case, the information is already there. Target selected, indicator selected, all these things give you information. Read for about two weeks. You must spend at least two weeks reading about affordable and clean energy. Why should you read? Because reading will tell you what is the information that you have on affordable clean and, and clean energy. And why is that important? Because that information will let you understand which is the problem we want to solve in the larger umbrella of affordable and clean energy. See how beautifully it is coming into place, falling into place. All you've got to do is read about the problem. Don't jump to the idea the minute you listen to a problem. Read, 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 read. Get as much information. Talk to people. Ask questions. Watch, uh, watch movies and watch, watch anything you can on affordable and clean energy. And tuck one light bulb happens. One light bulb movement happens and say, this is the problem I want to solve. So what does, uh, so this is the spiral. So now spiral with, the, with the confidence of the spiral in the background, Ishan chooses the problem. So what does he, he choose? He chooses a very, very different sort of problem. How might we cook in food in a manner that does not cause pollution, health ailments and uses readily available clean resources, right? So that's what he, he chooses. That's the, that's the problem that he's framed. Uh, you know, at leisure, at leisure, please uh, pause this video and read the problem very well. For me, the purpose of today explaining it to you is just to take you through the process. So <clears throat> why is it important for Ishan? Why is it an important problem? Because he, he, he talks about all the emotional connects he has with the problem about underprivileged citizens and empowering women and all that. So now he has defined the problem. What does he do next? He does. Biologize. Now, by now, you all, would be, all of you will be familiar. He says, how does nature accomplish what I wish to address? How does nature, how does nature, how does nature? It, it's going to, you know, when you, when, you, when you are sleeping, when you're waking up in your sleep, you're going to be starting to ask these questions. It's going to become part of you now. How does nature accomplish what I want to address? So therefore, what should you look for? The functions, right? The functions in nature that are related to the problem. Where here, what is the functions that, that are related to the problem? Capture and store energy. Capture and store energy. Produce food, break down chemical molecules. 
So therefore, the question he asks is, how does nature break down food molecules? So the function that he wants to accomplish and the function that nature accomplishes is the same. And therefore, he says, how does nature accomplish that function so that he can discover the organism that accomplishes the function? How does nature break down food molecules in hot weather conditions? And how does nature capture and store energy? These are the two functions he wants to ask. How does nature do it? Why would, what does he do next? He does discover. He goes to bio, uh, bio, uh, asknature.org and looks at those organisms that perform the same function that he wants to accomplish. And he looks at plants and he looks at what the plants do and says, oh, plants also do what I want to accomplish. Uh, uh, you know, I'm not going to get into it, but you must read it at leisure, find out what is the strategy that plants have. Then he chooses the oriental hornet. The oriental hornet, very strange, right? It's so, it's so beautiful. Imagine, imagine right in front of our eyes, uh, 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 a problem is being solved. And that is the beauty of biomimicry, right? And so he, and you know what? I did not even know the names of many of these organisms before I started learning. But what a shame. But I'm glad I'm learning biomimicry. At least I'm, a, I'm a able to understand the, engine, the, the engineers that these organisms are, right? Oriental hornet and therefore the oriental hornet accomplishes some of the functions that he's trying to, he's trying to accomplish. And then what does he do? He does abstract. Abstract is make it simple. Okay, I'm going to make abstract simple for you by saying abstract is about making it simple. So in that organism, in that organism, in the organism called plants, this is the, this is the biological strategy that is transferred, that, that is translated to a design strategy. He's made it very simple, looked at the strategy and abstracted in simple language what plants do. Similarly, same thing he has done abstract for, for the oriental hornet. His, his constant quest is the, is the define, what is the define for him? The define for him is how might we cook food in a manner that does not cause pollution? And then he has gone to buy. How does nature accomplish the function that he wants to accomplish? And then he discovers plants and oriental hornet. And he abstracts the principle, the biological strategy of those two organisms in simple language. And now this is the time from abstract to emulate where the bulb starts to shine in his head. He could have thought about a thousand ideas, but he chooses to think about this idea. So he thinks about a device that produces and injects nutrients into the body using sunlight. So there's a device, a wearable device that produces and injects nutrients into the body using sunlight. I'm not going to get into the details because it's going to be boring to read it for you, but you must, you must pause at this moment and read it because that 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 will help, that will encourage Ishan's work, right? Because he has worked so hard on, 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 the, on the strategy, on the, on, the, on the emulate, on the idea. And therefore, that's what he wants to do. He has drawn us a picture of his, of his, of his uh, idea, of his solution. And he has done the evaluate. Evaluate is looking at nature's principles, finding out if I can design something according to the way nature designs. And... And look at the first line. Reading the first line will help you understand, evaluate. Solution uses sunlight as the main source of energy, which is abundant. The principle is nature uses only abundant resources. Right? And therefore, he, he looks at the nature's principles, sees to it that he follows the nature's, nature's principles. And the next question is, what are the next steps? He says again, feasibility study on the assumptions and all that. But ultimately, what has happened from a problem, he has come to a solution using a disciplined process. Remember that this spiral is, is iterative. If you, if you are not satisfied with your final solution, you can go back to biologize, you can go back to define, you can go back to discover. So what have we learned in the, that, that from problem to solution, the spiral. And Ishan helped us understand how he has been able to, how he has, he has gone from problem to solution. I hope, I hope the more and more case studies that you see, the more and more inspiration you have. 
and it's important therefore now to be starting to be believing in yourself and saying i want to solve one of these problems too and look for answers from nature